We're going to start today with a question or two. For example, can we measure emotion and feelings? What healing force can travel across time, cultures and languages, as if they weren't even there? Well, what healing force can make you happy if you're sad, remember if you've forgotten, and manage or calm your emotions? You know, all that may sound like a riddle about some new magic wonder drug, but our inner world guide, Michelle Bernhardt, is about to show us a new frontier in the world of music. That's right, Roy and Judy. And on that frontier, the music plays and the computers hum side by side to uncover what we've always felt but never really understood. Admit it, each one of those short snippets made you feel something, remember something, perhaps even conjure specific scenes in your mind, different from those we showed you. If we're right, you've already had a small glimpse of the deep and mysterious connection between music and the mind. Our, our associations with music run really deep. It's something that is with us our entire lives. I mean, from birth, we're exposed to, to music. It just permeates who we are. And so, you know, we can hear those even fragments of music and it awakens the soul. Music looked like this in Mozart's time. In Peter Giannata's laboratory, it looks like this today. Janata is a scientist by profession, a performing musician by avocation. With his research, he's trying to get to the bottom of just where, within the vast complexity of the human brain, music creates its universal magic. Recording brain activity, so the EEG at the same time, and we're looking for signatures of that automatic processing of the emotional quality. To many, it might seem like an impossible quest. Can science really find a way to measure human emotion? To even discover where in us it comes from? Here's the medial prefrontal cortex that is reasonably spared in Alzheimer's. And here what we're showing with these red colors is these are um, parts of the brain that are responding more strongly to familiar memory evoking and pleasing music. The exciting thing is in the frontal cortex, when we improvise music, such as jazz pianists playing, in MRI studies, what they found is that activates the part of the brain that is the seat of consciousness. Music therapist Christine Stevens is internationally known for harnessing music's power to heal. She says new research confirms what humankind's earliest healers sensed when they first beat out a rhythm or raised their voices in song or chant. Everyone has inside them a drum, the heartbeat. It's the first rhythm that we learned in the womb of our mother. So we all have been learning music for a very long time. We're informed by science, by medical research, so that we can bring music into people's lives in a very accurate research-based, evidence-based way today. Piece by piece, the evidence is exposing music's enormous potential as a force that can reawaken the soul in those who have lost almost everything else, even memory itself. I've been, I've been, this, I've been here 90 years, and if I could remember, I would tell you, but I don't, I can't remember. Regina Scully produced the acclaimed documentary film, Alive Inside. It dramatically chronicles the effect a simple song and nothing else can have on those with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. When people are listening to music, it literally lights up the most parts of the brain. Listening to music activates everything. And we also know that there's a part of the brain that music has an effect on that stimulates memory. And we know now that music can help people with dementia and Alzheimer's. One of the films that we produced is called Alive Inside, and it deals with this whole issue. Uh -huh. Takes me back to my school days. I would like to hit the number. Mama told us not to go listen to him. We would sneak off at night, bring back pictures. 
from the best. And I worked in Kingstown in nine years. You give me Kingstown. My birthday, November 20th, 19. That was in the wartime. I was working at Fort Jackson. And my son, on February the 4th, was 69. <laughs> I didn't know I could talk so well. <laughs> Music becomes a very effective tool for um, bringing emotional richness uh, to the lives of individuals who otherwise may not have that in their daily lives. Um, you know, I think when you can connect the person with their past, um, elicit nostalgia, the quintessential emotion of, of memory. And here's your iPod. All you have to do is click the, uh, the center button one time. I think you're all set. Would you still love to my There are parts of the brain that are still spared in Alzheimer's patients that somehow allow the incoming music that they're hearing to interact with these memories of the past. In his lab today, Peter Janata and his assistants are experimenting with measuring the emotional content uh, of individual sounds one by uh, one. He hopes to collect new data showing not just why some sounds help us feel better, but how. I think that music can promote healing and wellness in, in many ways. Music creates this rich world that our minds can interact with in all these ways that people aren't going to be judgmental about. What's interesting about preventive medicine is using music not just to treat illnesses, but also to maintain our health and well-being. The doctors don't have to prescribe this, you prescribe it yourself. There's no side effects and you don't even need to refill your prescriptions. Peter Janata and fellow musician Gene Fox have found that as effective as music can be as a healing force for everyone, it's an essential need for some. Going out to play music once a week is absolutely critical for my mental health. You know, it gives me an opportunity to interact musically with other people, just to let loose, try out new stuff. So it's, it's a great release. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you could carry a tune or not. It always feels good to sing and your voice is important. The ability to engage with music in a free and creative way allows you to work through thoughts. It's kind of like music becomes the background soundtrack for your life. One thing most of us know is how personal music can be. Different genres of music, different performers, even different versions of the same piece of music can resonate with us personally or not resonate at all. So it's a good idea to have your own playlist of music already with selections tailored to your own memories, moods, and feelings. And one more thing, the movie Alive Inside, you saw a glimpse of in our story, is very moving and makes an important point that you didn't see. One doctor in the movie pointed out that just a $40 compact music player can have a far greater healing effect than dozens of medications on the lives of loved ones who may be dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's. Thanks, Michelle. What a moving and powerful story. And up next, another powerful story about another kind of healing power, not quite as ancient, but it still may have saved a woman's life after Western medicine was stumped for 12 years.